Assalamu alaikum, hello. So this is the first video I'm going to record for London Art Galleries. Um, I've been running the group um, for a very long time. It's over 44,000 members and was once the largest art group on Facebook. Um, and the very first uh, interview, review, uh, insight I give is to the Kamala Ibrahim uh, Isak exhibition on at Serpentine Gallery that just opened uh, this month and will close on the 29th of January so plenty of time to see it until next year 2023. Kamala is one of my heroes and it's all put so much light into my heart that she was given this solo exhibition. Um, I, I want to belong to a uh, British Muslim community or a global Muslim community that really honours and respects what this great woman did. She's a pioneer of women's arts education in Sudan, um, but she's also a avant-garde modernist painter that was inspired by William Blake. She wrote the Crystalist Manifesto. You can see images of her in the 60s and she just looks so incredibly cool, uh, whilst looking very Islamic, um, like um, not that different from um, I'm looking at it, just just cool and she now these days she looks like a uh, brown uh, hijabi auntie um i i'm going to say two things one is that the exhibition is actually um doesn't represent the fullness of her um so i do have a critique of the exhibition but that shouldn't stop you from looking at um, who she is and what she's achieved and um, at the moment the only people who really champion her are the Qatari royal family um, yeah the Saja lot um, so I first discovered Kamala um, Ibrahim when I was in a uh, Yan Van Eyck Academy and I felt really isolated and I, I sensed a sense of hopelessness that the only way to become like a person of significance in the art world was to essentially sell out your religion. Um, the guy who runs the Anvan Academy is a Moroccan guy, but you've heard the Malcolm X uh, thing about the house Negro and the field Negro, and uh, it's that can apply to curators as well. Often the ones at the top are like that, and so I thought one had to become like a house artist or a house curator or whatever like one had to really look like the white man and uh, you know really absorb his shit um and that was the context i sort of discovered Kamala. i felt very isolated i was the only person who didn't get drunk or um take drugs or um um i really actually discovered my really discovered my islamic um practice uh, whilst living in the netherlands um and I discovered Kamala in the library, where I spent a lot of my time, which was in a few um, safe havens in the Anvil Academy, where there wasn't like a big, <coughs> like, rave going on to 4am. And, <coughs> I know, it was something like a revelation. I was looking at the Crystalist Manifesto, and firstly, those, those figures in London that I admired, like, I still, I, lo I love the William Blake exhibition, it's one of my favourites. Um, so this sort of synthesis of different aspects of, you know, things that are deep in my heart, like my Islamic, Islamic ancestry and the avant-garde and modernism and uh, outsiders such as William Blake. Um, and the best bit, apart from this exhibition, is the archive box of the, the vitrine, in my opinion. So that's where you see who uh, Kamala Ibrahim Isak is and what her importance and energy is. And you see she inhabits all sorts of spaces, like newspapers that are distributed across Sudan or uh, covers of like poetry or um, or some mural she did for venues. And so she's part of the social fabric of Sudan. And... That doesn't come across in the Serpentine Gallery where you have a standard white cube uh, exhibition which is the hoardings of a very rich person. There are some delightful p 
paintings in there. Um, there's drum shaped um, paintings. There's there's there is sort of uh, solidarity. There's earthly life. You also have glimpses of the Royal College of Art where she studied, which is just across the road. Like that that energy of what the social which she represents in social fabric, and it's very similar to when I first saw someone who used to be one of my heroes, Shahid al Alam. And when I first saw him exhibit in uh, the White Chapel or whatever, these other white cube commercial galleries, and they showed a little trinket of something he did here and there. That doesn't represent the energy of who Shahid al Alam is in Bangladesh. I mean, what Shahid al Alam represents as a teacher, as a social energy, as a social sculpture, what he is within the social fabric of, of Bangladesh and, and Bangladesh society, and um, how he interrupts um you know injustice of the state has prepared for his line his life on the line you know all of that is Shah Alam Bath Shala, the photography school that's Shah Alam and there's something similar in Kamala Ibrahim Isik and you get a little glimpse of it in the vitrine box which is where I felt the most inspired and energized um and the rest uh it's sort of there's four murals, like, you know, it's just not... I guess that would be impossible to do in, you know, someone who hasn't um, really been part of the fabric of, uh, I don't know, certainly London art galleries, but I, I don't know, I think, um, I don't know, there's, there's something, to me there's a better exhibition to be made, so, um, Yes, yeah, so, I, so I felt disappointed. Do go, do bring all your friends. But um, yes, yeah, I feel like she deserves a more invested, um, energising uh, exhibition rather than what is just, I don't know, it's just like a rich person collects some of your work and puts it on a wall. Um, and the other thing that Serpentine Gallery does now in the past is just give you a plain, you know, program, you know, plain paper program that you create now you have to download an app from Bloomberg Connects to uh, get the program so I haven't actually done that I'm not gonna do that there's there's certain context political context such as um, there's there's a painting on what looks like bubbles in the sea and that's actually solidarity with um, a particular p political protest within Sudan um, I don't know I just uh, the lifeblood of who she is and what she represents as a teacher and the, the sort of spirit of her is just not so present in in how the show's been curated um in the sort of i mean you you may have been to certain kind of galleries in a very rich area it's in Knightsbridge it's where the very affluent people live um I don't know, I just i don't know I, i'm 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 not um, I, there's a better exhibition she deserves a better exhibition um, I think curating itself is just advanced to a point where I don't know, such a, it was such a I don't know, something plain and dis disappointing about it like in the corner there are these uh, you see her engagement with the Quran as well um, I know so the thing I got is that one doesn't have to like become a Berlin Arab hipster and uh, read Deleuze Babel and in, in, really imbibe that in your heart like a creed and aspire to be white and get white love um, um, it's like the same age as my father um, she's in her 80s and I felt really sad when Zarina Hashmi uh, died uh, just recently and, and there wasn't this attempt to like really honour her in uh yeah, British Muslim communities where you switch between a very macho pack nexus like Islam twenty one C and Five Pillars and Cage. That that network isn't gonna honour someone like her. They don't honour someone like me really. And then you have like the sort of Kadastistan, like the sort of hijabi influencer which is as hollow. And I don't know, I just So I just needed to have a little rant about about both these social contexts and uh, 
she doesn't do her work for the Qatari royal family, that's not the spirit that um, motivates her. And, and I feel there's an absence of connection. And it is largely posh white people who are going to go around this uh, gallery in a very affluent area of London. I, don't, I feel there's some missing social energy from the whole project, which um, really just needs to be connected with somehow. Um, so anyway, I do go and see it, but um, I ask you to look further this year. It's just some really beautiful films made about um, her teaching and her sort of life in Sudan and not ripping it up and putting it in this disembodied cold white cube. Um, I don't know, just, where, where, does, where does she stand in relation to that white cube collection? I don't know. I mean, you can, there are some really ways in which you can focus on, say, uh, brushwork and the energy of uh, colours and like patterns and like but yeah I, I just in terms of what she represents in my heart and my life spirit that that this exhibition doesn't quite get there um and go there and let me know your thoughts and 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 i'd be interested in what you think um but do, do go and see it and and please look up her name um plenty of beautiful videos on youtube um and uh, the catalogue wasn't published by the time I went to the exhibition. It's going to come out soon. Hopefully that would restore some balance in terms of who she is and, and, and also the public programme that might be around the exhibition. And, yeah, I don't know. Obviously the, the Emily, Holly and Polly's and the white goldsmith women who run the press departments and these galleries or the sort of coconut... Um, I don't know... Emily Polly Holly on the inside, Deleuze Babble people aren't gonna like know how to connect with those people. I feel she does connect with those people, like, she, and, and she is partly one of them too. And I don't know. I'm glad these first steps are taken to, to, to sort of honour her in collections and solo exhibitions, but there's, there's more work to be done and. Um, I hope when her time of passing comes and her soul leaves the dunya, uh, we will honour her uh, in a way that we didn't honour Zarina Hashmi, the uh, amazing artist and printmaker who, who did work on the Rohingyas and partition and wrote about experiences of displacement. I mean, and and nine eleven and like. And in such simple forms, and I know there's something that really, I mean, rather optimistically, I, I posted this up on Facebook, and Sadia Ahmed from Everyday Muslim, and the guy leading the Muslim Tours of London, they, they connected with it, they gave it heart statuses. Um, my, my wonderful friend, Oriana Fox, who's a New York Jewish uh, performance artist, who's been very supportive towards my work, uh, they've all as a result of me publicly posting about it, I have uh, gone on to say they'll um, take their class or bring their kids or like, and that that's really great. I think kids would actually really enjoy it. And I, I mean that in a good way. I mean, I really think they'll connect with something in terms of um, going to the exhibition, you know what I mean? Ah, that's a compliment too. Um, so yeah, this is my first little rant uh, for, for London Art Galleries. Um, and, you know, I've spent the last uh, three decades of my life uh, going to London Art Galleries, so, um, and I'm a Londoner. And so, yeah, uh, there'll be more commentaries to come. Um, and this is the first, uh, so London Art galleries on Facebook and at London Art G on Instagram.